Hey, hey, welcome back to another episode of the She's Making an Impact podcast. I'm your host, Rachel and Gom. Do you want to learn how podcasting can help you create a bigger impact and grow your audience without having to be tethered to your phone on social media all day long? That's what we're talking about today. I have brought in my friend, Stephanie Gass. She is a CEO, wife, boy, mom, coffee lover, and PJ's all day enthusiast and um, is crushing it as the host of the Stephanie Gass Show, 0.5% top globally ranked podcast. Um, We're talking all things podcasting today. So what I need from you is if you have a friend that wants to grow with podcasting, share this episode with them. They're going to find it so helpful and they'll say thank you for sharing. All right, let's dive in. Hey, Stephanie, welcome to the show. Hey, Rachel. Good to see you. You too. So let's dive in. Tell us, I know this is the second time we've had you on the show, right? Yep. It's, yes, been a, ma'am. it's been a few years. Well, I'm excited. I know this time we're talking all about podcasting. So why don't you catch us up a little bit on who you are, what you do? Sure. So I'm Stephanie Gass, as Rachel mentioned, and I run a business all around helping women get super clear on what their godlet calling is, and then turning that into their life's work by making it a business and how that actually happens for, for us and my students is creating a podcast, which is how we get known. That's how we create that audience and that growth. And then the next phase is once we have that podcast and it's growing and it's working for us, we then either coach or create a course. And those are the two methods that I teach because I don't want you to be on social 24 seven. I've played that. It's super exhausting. You can't win the game. You can't win. And then I want you to have freedom in your life to go do all the things you're called to do, be a wife and a mom and and serve or give or whatever it is and still make impact and income. So that's what I do. I've been a full-time entrepreneur for eight and a half years. I'm a boy mom. I love Jesus. I'm obsessed with coffee and kombucha and PJs all day. That's my life. PJs all day. I'm here for it. (laughs) Yeah. Awesome. So who should have a podcast? Is this this something like anyone should have a podcast or? So I believe so fiercely that if you want to be an online business owner of any kind, I don't care what it is. You want to be a blogger or have a a mission to help people meal prep, or you're a network marketer and you sell essential oils, or you want to be a life coach or a business coach, or you want to teach people how to homeschool their kids, any type of online business, whatever it is, you have to pick some type of online long form content Mm -hmm. because social isn't going to work for you. I'm sorry, but you've probably tried and you probably agree with me that you have to force it. You have to show up every day, 24 seven, that now I have to make reels. And now I have to go viral on TikTok. And like, it's this forced game of like trying to get, get visible and nothing converts. So you get a bunch of food. Yeah. (laughs) And you're so tired (laughs) and nothing converts. So even if you get a bunch of likes or views or followers, how much money are you actually making? That's my question for you. Those of you that were like, well, I have a bunch of likes. Okay, fine. Is it translating to the bank account? And the reason that it's not is there's no intimacy. There's no vulnerability. They give you 20 seconds of their attention and they're on to the next thing. So I believe if you want to have success without selling your soul to the internet, you have to either write and blog, which is okay for some people, but it's a long game. It's slow grow. Um, Or you have to do video which creates intimacy, but it's more work. You're editing and hello, you got to put makeup on. Like who wants to do that? Or you don't have know, to, right. but like, you know, Rachel and I are over here like, no, thank you. You got to be a little bit presentable usually yeah. a little bit. Or you have to do audio. And so for me, I'm like, audio is the way because right. there's only one podcast for every thousand blogs. Um, so it's still not as saturated. It's so easy. Like I record I I do three episodes a week and I work 15 hours less in my business than when I was on social. I actually don't market on social anymore, which is crazy. So the answer is yes. Everyone who has any type of online business that they want to grow, you've got to pick one. And I think podcasting fits for 90% of people in the online space. How do you create a podcast that actually, you know, gets found and gets noticed organically? Such a good question. Now you can start a podcast on your own. You can just go to Google university, type it in, figure it out, start a free one. There's free, free sites. And you may or may not make it because well, as with anything, like 
you can't just throw spaghetti at the wall and hope that it sticks. Some of you may get lucky, but the truth is there is a lot of strategy in making a podcast that will work for you. So some of my favorite hacks are make sure that you have SEO and keyword driven title to your show and something I call a tagline or a tactical specific outcome statement on your art. So this would be something like, let's say you started the meal prep mom podcast. Well, now you have meal prep as a key phrase, an SEO term that people might search into Apple podcasts. And then let's say that you make a nice clean tagline like uh, meal prep hacks and mealtime strategies for busy moms. Mm -hmm. Now you've got more SEO working for you. And then I go even deeper and we have those keywords in the titles of your shows, in the descriptions mm -hmm. of your shows. So what happens is these little um, key phrases go out into the internet. They go out into Apple, they go out into to Google or wherever people are searching. And someone types in meal prep for busy moms or meal prep tips or meal prep, how to get started with meal prep. Well, you have that phrase. So your podcast comes up and, and people start finding you organically. That's the easiest hack that we use. Um, the second thing that we want to use, Hold on. let's yeah. start, let's stay there for a second. Love it. Is there any specific tools that you do to do SEO research for the podcast specifically? So you want to number one, do real market research with real humans. Cause sometimes people are like, yeah, just go wherever and do some research. That's okay. Because you can find like the popular key phrases. Like you could go to Pinterest and go into the search bar, right. And type in like meal prep and see what the highest search terms are. And you should grab a few of those and those should be embedded throughout your stuff. But you also need to sit with like five to 10 of your ideal listener and ask her what, when it comes to meal prep, what are you searching for? And you're going to look for consistencies because what's interesting is sometimes your person is a little bit different than like the mass mm -hmm. person that might be. And you want to find the most niche keyword that you, in, that you possibly can find. I want to be a big fish in a small pond. And so, you know, instead of me being like online business, I might use Christian entrepreneur because I'm niching a bit more into that Christian entrepreneur space, or instead of like how to start a podcast and like fight with Neil Patel, I might use something or fight with, um, Pat, you know, I might find something a little bit more niche, like how to make money from your podcast. Mm -hmm. So you're going to look, you can look at Pinterest. Uh, you can use Uber suggest. They have a free search platform that we really like, and you're really looking for, what your person would say in two to three word chunks. And I know that Rachel teaches this as well for Pinterest marketing, yep. similar for your podcast guys. So you're going to use those key phrases and you're going to just embed that throughout. So that's one way that you can find those. And then we test, you may pick keywords that you think are the best for you. Stick with them for six months, see how the podcast is going, see what your top downloaded episodes are, and then readjust, right? Follow the growth. Mm-hmm. Got it. Okay. And that cut you off before you're going into that's the okay. second way. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Now the second one is having true valuable content that gets shared. So, you know, I, we, you, I would rather you have short sticky episodes that you have two a week than one hour and a half long blab session, right? Like what's going to get shared because the fastest way to grow still is word of mouth which is so weird. You're thinking like, oh, I've got to go viral. Cool. But does it convert? Mm -hmm. It doesn't convert because the person doesn't trust you yet. It's cold market. But if Rachel goes over to her best friend, Nancy's house and is like, I'm obsessed with Stephanie Gass's thing about podcasting. I mean, have you ever thought about podcasting to sell your essential oils? And then Nancy or whatever I just named her over there is like, that's interesting. Do you know her? And Rachel's like, yeah. I've listened to her podcast for, for a year and I'm obsessed. And so now there's all of this credibility that just got created and Nancy's going to go buy the thing in a couple of days, a couple of weeks. We don't know, but it's going to be a lot faster than if Nancy sees some random video on the internet, she doesn't right. know me. So that word of mouth marketing is what happens when you're consistent in your podcasting content, your episodes are short, clean. We've found that 20 minutes or less is a really great sweet spot for 95% of listeners. Got it. And then you ask actively for them to share it. So what's that CTA look like when you're trying to grow? It's, do you know someone else that is struggling with meal prep? Do you know someone else who has four kids and they're crying into their kitchen full, sink full of dishes going, I just don't know what's for dinner. Share this episode with them. 
and you have this like authentic ask, that's how you, you can do this completely organically, no repurposing, no additional marketing at all, which of course we can repurpose with Pinterest, which we're going to talk about, but that's the organic strategy right off of the get it takes no money, no time. And honestly, I've helped people grow their podcast without ever doing one thing on social media. They've wow. completely laid it down. So what would you say to someone? Maybe they've had a podcast for a while and maybe they like, it's not growing the way they want it to grow. What could they do to maybe like get a reboot or what would that look like? So there's two questions that you must be able to answer. If you want your podcast to explode one, who is the only person I serve? So it's one identity. Mm-hmm. How old are they? Who are they? What are they struggling with? I mean, stop being afraid to dig super niche, super into one identity. And then the second question you ask yourself is what's the one thing I do to solve that problem, Mm. right? So I help online business or online uh, women start their online business. How do we solve that problem? They're going to start a podcast. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm doing. Right. And so every word out of my mouth is these two things. That means my messaging is clear. No one's confused. This isn't a lifestyle podcast. Right. You don't want to talk about motherhood and mindset and marriage and business and faith, because now you're talking to no one because you're talking to everyone. So niche in so, so, so deeply. The second thing you can do is make sure you have keywords and clarity on in throughout your podcast and just start with what you think. And then the third one is fix your art. (laughs) So those of you that have had a podcast out for a long time, maybe you made it yourself on Canva or maybe it's not super professional. Like that is the, I feel so way. called out right now. Cause I made my <laughs> podcast start myself. Like when we started it like three and a half, four years ago, or four years ago, So okay. Rachel change it. And wh- I will <laughs> bet you, I will bet you money that within like 30 days, you'll immediately see a bump. It's so oh, weird no. because it's the cover of your book. Right. And people oh, are no. so distracted, not saying yours is bad, but right. you can tell, right. When someone's always like, be better. <laughs> yeah, it can always be better. And I've gone through four as I got more clear too. on like, what should my t- little tagline be on here and what, mm. you know, and it's gotten better and better. And so have the downloads. Right. And it's interesting. I have my students swap out their art. They immediately see like 10, 15% growth. Cause people are sitting here. They see 27 podcasts to pick from when they type in like Pinterest marketing or meal prep. And they're like, any, mini, mini, mo. What art do I like? That's literally what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So changing art is one thing we can do. What else can we do to like see like a bump? Yeah. Go back through old episodes and fix the titles. Oh, that's a fun hack. Yeah. Just so like make them more SEO friendly. Yeah. So let's say on our example that this woman has something like um, how to create easy meals for your kids. That's an an old episode. Okay, well, that's great, but it has no SEO in there. It's not going to get found. So she could change it for, she could change it to like four easy mealtime, four easy wins for dinner, for uh, successful dinners for picky kids or picky eaters. Hmm. And so now she's got picky eaters. She's got dinner ideas and she promised three dinner ideas. So she can go back through and just revamp all of those titles. They're still working for her on the internet. Right. They're still working for her on if she marketed them on Pinterest or she marketed them. Um, they're still there. They, it, that's what podcasting is so, so amazing is because yeah. social, you create a piece of content. It's gone in 24 hours totally. a podcast. You create an episode, which took you way less time than that reel. Let's be honest. Yeah. That thing works for you for every, forever. Five years later, someone types in specifically like meal prep ideas for picky kids. That episode still shows up wow. and you're still getting downloads and you're still hopefully making sales. If you have a way that you've monetized your show. Let's talk monetization. What Love should it. we do? <laughs> yeah. So there's so many ways you can make money podcasting. Um, people think the best way is like, I'll get sponsors. I'll put ads on my podcast. And that's because that's what you hear the big podcasters doing. Well, the big podcasters have 20 million downloads and you do get paid like court, like nickels on the download. Okay. So those of you starting out, you know, you have a hundred thousand downloads. You just made 10 bucks. (laughs) Like it's really not lucrative to do sponsorships and ads when you're new. Um, So save that for when you're Joe Rogan. But what you can do from the very beginning, that is a huge profit margin. My favorite is coaching. And I know that made made you get squeamish, but the truth is coaching and mentoring 
All it is, is helping someone do what you've already done. So that meal prep mom goes, Hey, you want a meal prep mentor session? I'll sit with you and plan your week's menu. We'll meet for an hour. You'll have a complete menu for let's say three weeks and I'll print it for you. I'll email it over and it'll be so great. It's 50 bucks or it's a hundred bucks, whatever it is. You market it right on the podcast and you get some clients. That's the, that's you starting start there because that's how you get to know what would the course be? What does she want from me? What are they asking? Do that market research. And I say minimum of five clients before you start thinking about what your online course will be. Then let's say our girl met with five to 10 clients and she got clear on, oh man, they're struggling with uh, making a meal prep menu easy or in less than 30 minutes. So maybe that course becomes the meal prep, meal prep mastery, 30 minutes or less every week. I don't know. And that's the course that you now sell, which is my second absolute favorite way that we make money from a podcast. You have a passive income course that you sell that solves number one problem to your number one person. I mean, you can have a million dollar business on that one course alone. I'm here. The internet just totally went out. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Keep going. Yeah. So I, I, I had just said, you can have, and I always say you should have a multi six figure business on one course alone before you ever look at the next thing. If you look totally. at it, it can be so yep. simple. We overcomplicate making money from our podcast, but if you find the one problem that your person has, that's your million dollar ticket. Yep. Totally. I mean, we have, we've had one main course that we marketed. It's done over a million dollars and now we're like, maybe oh, we'll do another one, but yeah. like, but I, why? I listen, I'm like, I'm a good student and I follow Russell Brunson. And so he yeah. was like, until you get your click funnels award, don't create another funnel. So I got yeah. my award. Now I'm like, maybe I'll create another. Funnel. Yeah. Let's maybe get crazy. No, it's, <laughs> it's because you found what you serve and what they need. And, <laughs> yep. that, and for me, it's like the next phase is just making that thing even better. And then maybe raising yep. the price of that one thing that you have. Totally. Cool. What are some mistakes you see with podcasting? Yeah. One mistake I see with podcasting is trying to be what someone else already is. Hmm. So we come out there and we have an idea or the meal prep mom. She's like, cool, I want to do this. So she goes into the internet or she goes to look at other people's podcasts and she decides to pick, oh, I should probably do like family dinner instead. Like you get in someone else's lane because you're looking up. And the other problem I see is you look up because you're new. And so you go listen to everyone else's content and it skews what you're really called to say. Totally. So my favorite thing and my biggest advice for you is like, start from your heart, like partner with God in this process, let Holy spirit lead you and what it's called and what you should say. I don't listen to business podcasts. I definitely didn't in the beginning. So I was way too impressionable. I would have been like copying everybody's stuff, not on purpose, but because you think what they're doing is working, right? You've got to go from what you've done. You have this unique, beautiful, unique experience that you've walked through and that you have the answer to your way. Don't change it because you think that yours isn't good enough or that you're not qualified for it. Just go and don't look up. So that's one mistake. The second one I see is giving no, up. I just want to stop there because what you said yeah. was so good. Like good. that was so good. Thank you. It's so true. It's like you were yeah. created for that message that you have and you got to see it through. Yep. Someone yep. out there is someone out there is praying for you and what you've done. And if you hold that back or you change that message, they don't get blessed because you are their blessing. Yep. Now, the second one is they give up too soon. So you start a podcast and within 30 days, you're not making six figures and you're like, this isn't working. I suck. I only have this many downloads and you're maybe you're comparing yourself to someone else, which you cannot do. The craziest story, Rachel, is I have this student, I, I got her started on a podcast and her podcast was like, pew, 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 pew. and I'm like, I'm telling you, like, this is it. Like, I know what you're, I helped her come up with like what it is that she does. And it was pretty flat until about a year in all of a sudden it just exploded. She's passed me in total downloads in a very short amount of time. And so it's like, if she would have compared herself to me, she could have easily given up six months in, hmm. but everybody's graph looks different. Right. You just have to stick with what you know that you're called to do and be, be strategic in it, of course, and learn and get better, but don't give up on it. Yep. You're going to tweak it. You're going to change it. Look, Rachel's going to update her art by four years in, right? I like, know. <laughs> it's okay. I rebranded. Um, 
I rebranded last summer, uh, the whole thing, all of it. Cause it was like, I changed and my messaging changed. It's okay. What, but what, don't is the, what did the rebrand look like for you? Was it changing the title, the tagline, starting a new show? What yeah. was that like? Oh man, that was nuts. I had the mompreneur mastermind show as my original, my whole business originally was to help network marketers. Cause that's where I had come from. And then so you start with where you were. And then over time I was helping people with starting a different type of online business. And I got much bigger than just the network marketing space. And it, the word just didn't land with me anymore. Mompreneur. And I'm like, oh, I want it to just be the Stephanie gas show. And I had earned that through the growth of the show to not have an SEO title anymore. And so I rebranded to the Stephanie gas show. I have a whole new, like, um, get clear in your calling and start an online business. God's way is our new tagline. And, um, and it was new colors, new website, like at the whole package, it was the craziest year of my life. Cause it really took eight months to completely redo it. And it was so worth it because I feel peace about it now. And I know that I've gone to this next place in my business and in, in who and how I'm serving her. And so don't be afraid of knowing this will change and it will, but, but if I had given up on it, then I wouldn't have seen this through. And there are so many moments where I'm like, I should just give up. I had a lull for a whole summer where it went down. And I'm like, I don't know if this is working, but the world wants you to give up on what you've been called to do, but you've got to see it through because we are not on our timeline. We're on God's timeline for our business. Yeah. And we don't know who we're called to help. We just have to show up and be obedient in that. I think a lot of times too, we hear like these crazy numbers of podcast downloads of like a million downloads and all these things when yeah. it's like, you have a hundred downloads, that's a hundred people that are listening to your show. And it's like, imagine a hundred people that are sitting there in a room, just listening to you. Like those are a hundred people that you get to impact right there. Seriously. So many people I know, <laughs> like, think about that. Think of speaking in front of a hundred people. Yeah. That gave you butterflies. That is you'll blow through a hundred downloads before you know it in your podcast and go, what wow, my reach, it, it really can happen through, through podcasting. And it's just so much easier because it goes deeper. Yeah. Like, like look at how much Rachel and I have spoken to you guys about in a short amount of time versus if you had come and seen a post from me or a video from Rachel, you're like, okay, that was cool next, but you're really listening to us. You're here in the room with us right now. We're creating that connection with you which hopefully means you keep listening to the podcast, right? And if you ever decide to work with us, that's the point of podcasting is this deep connection in a short amount of time that we just can't get anywhere else. Yep. So let's talk Pinterest and podcasting. Yeah. How, how do the two work together? I love this. So I am not a fan of social media as far as having to fight and force for the likes and the and you guys can come listen. I have a crazy journey on my, on my own of being addicted to Instagram. And I laid it down for 30 days and then I laid it down for three months and then I never got back on. And it's like, my business has exploded and I don't scroll Facebook anymore. Like it's so freeing to know that you can have a business without it. Mm -hmm. However, what I've always loved is platforms that are one to many. So social is one, one to one, you have to post someone has to see it. You have to engage. You have to go to the DMS. Like it's just so much work. It's like death, but podcasting and Pinterest work the same way. You put a piece of content into the world and then that piece of content works for you. Mm -hmm. So you, you just heard how I talk about using podcasting, but imagine taking your latest podcast episode, creating a handful of graphics that go with it, even one or two, putting it over onto Pinterest with keywords with some specific messaging that lands for your person, sharing it. And now Pinterest starts marketing your podcast episode for you every single day, all across the world. Mm -hmm. And that when people click on the pin, it goes directly back to your episode. You don't even have to add blogging here. You can yeah. just do Pinterest and podcasting and um, we do, and it's insane. I love it. It's such a, it's such a smart way to be able to reach people so much longer than on social. Cause I'm like, Pinterest works just like podcasting does where stuff will last five years later, you mm -hmm. know? So it's like, it's just, it's so much smarter. And it, I mean, and yes, it changes, but it doesn't change exponentially. Like podcasting and Pinterest are like the OGs and people are constantly looking for the new and shiny. Like, yeah. oh, I'll go to TikTok and do all this. And then remember when clubhouse was cool. And then I'll go I'll, like, and they're just chasing like new thing, new thing, new thing. And I'm like, aren't you tired? Like 
stick with the OG, the stuff that like it's tried and true, it's been proven and it, it gives you your life back. Yeah. Like imagine not having to post something every day. Imagine not having this weird tugging feeling when your child is talking to you because your phone is sitting there in your hand and you really want to look at your phone instead of your child's face. Like mm-hmm. that's how bad it got for me. And I know there's freedom from it. And I just think that we don't believe it could be real for us, that there's a, a way to grow a business without it, but it's so possible. Like what I've done, what God's done in my business and with my students, it proves it that social media is here and it can be used for good. But the reality is, is that if you're lost in it, if it's become an idol in your life, like look at some other ways that you can do this and have impact and income and get your time back. Yeah. Yeah. I think there are ladies listening to this right now that are like, really, can I, can I really do that and build without using social? Yes, you can. Yeah. You can build a business that gives you that freedom where you're not strapped to your phone. Thanks God. Cause that sucks. It does. (laughs) It steals from you. It steals so much from you. And you know, the days are long and the years are short with our kiddos and with our family. And, and I just remember wanting so badly the freedom, but thinking that it it couldn't possibly work without it. And God's so good, right? He's like, just watch what I can do with your yes. Yeah. What does it mean to you to make an impact? What it means to me is showing women this, that they can have growth and income without having to do it the world's way, that they can do it God's way. Hmm. What's one of the best books you've read? Okay. One of my favorite books recently, I pulled it up because I forgot his name is Stay in Your Lane, Discover the Road to Infinite Fulfillment by Lee Dominique. Lee and Dominique. He, yes, it's D O M I N G U E. And he, it is so good. It talks so much about why you need. <laughs> my son just came in the room. He's so handsome. Oh my gosh. Hi, hi Rachel. Hi, Rachel. Mama. Hi. Mama. What do you need? Can Um Hugo come in? Yes, he can. I'll let him in. Okay, can you shut the door for me? Thank you. Okay. And that is the beauty of podcasting. We could cut that out if we wanted to. <laughs> but we won't because I won't. think it just shows what it's really like to build a business and be a mom at the same time. Sometimes that looks like kids coming in and saying, into your podcast. You. <laughs> I need you like, coming into the podcast interviews. And and that too is why I love podcasting so much, is because you guys can do this around your kids' lives. Yep. Well, they're home. You can edit stuff out. When I used to do video, my kids would come in with fruit snacks and throw them at me and talk about poop. And that was inevitable. Like every time I tried to do a YouTube video and I was like, this video thing is not working for me. Oh my so, gosh. so the so book good. is, is so good. It's really about why you have, you've been called to stay in the lane that God's created for you. And when we get out of the lane, we're met with resistance. Your life feels hard. Business feels hard. Nothing is working. You're struggling. You're striving. But when you're in your lane and God's leading you, that everything feels more effortless and and peaceful. Anyway, it just blessed me so much. So highly recommend that one. What is the title again? I'm opening up Amazon as we speak because I know. Yes, it's Stay in Your Lane by Lee Dominique, D-O-M-I-N-G-U-E. So good. Cool. I love new recommendations. Usually it's like, oh, I've read that one, but now I'm like, nope, this is a new one. I love it. Good. Uh, Where can we connect with you? Yeah. So my podcast is called the Stephanie Gas Show. If you're a faith-led entrepreneur who wants to get clear, start that podcast, do all the things we talked about today, come listen. Over 400 episodes. I'm crazy. Come hang out with me. And then I do have a free workshop for those of you who are curious about how to grow your business using podcasting instead of social media. And that's at podcastforgrowth.com. Podcast, F-O-R-G-R-O-W-T-H.com. Awesome. Thank you so much, Stephanie, for being on the show. I really appreciate you. Thanks so much, Rachel.